For the ninth time, Wild Oats 11 has won the line honours of the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia's annual Solus Big Boat Challenge around Sydney Harbour. Scallywag and Boat Jest were also in their problems at the start, having to thread their way through at high speed the spectator boats just moments after the starting gun, and we were there, right on the spot. David Witt, skipper of Scallywag, mate, the start, tell me all about it. Well, it was interesting, wasn't it? We got it. We got lucky, I think. We could have been putting a rig back together. Um, yeah, it was a short start line, and the spectator feet was right near the pen, but there's no exclusion zone in this race, so basically they've got to give way to us. Um, and there was a ferry probably too far advanced, but he wasn't too bad of a problem, but the problem was the maritime boat, so we're just sailing along, and it's a big maritime boat, twin engines on the back, and I was just waiting for him to move out of the way, and the closer and closer we got, we got, he didn't move, literally didn't move, and I think he turned his engines on, I don't know what he did, but... Um, by that stage there was another spectator boats to weather of us and I basically just was in a dead end street and I had nowhere to go so I tried to just do my best to weave it between the three boats. I think we had a ferry, a cruising boat to lure it and then we had a, a maritime boat above and anyway luckily we got through. But, well, it was a reasonable high level of concentration. <laughs> I, could, I could see you elbowing your way through there. Yeah, mate. yeah, it's a bit like trying to get into the back of a ruck, and I, I, I never used to like to get into too many of them. No, <laughs> not either, no, mate. Back in the race, Perpetual Loyal rolled out a big black Code Zero, and then it was Oates' turn to unwrap a huge white Code Zero, much fuller and bigger than a rival's. With the extra horsepower, she quickly mowed Bell down and would never relinquish the lead again. Generally, Perpetual Loyal looked faster upwind than Scallywag, though its skipper David Wood explained the Hong Kong boat was not able to use its water ballast on the tight harbour course. Be that as it may, Wild Oats 11 may have won the Solar's Big Boat Challenge again this year, but after a couple of exceedingly disappointing years, Perpetual Loyal is back with a crew which features most from Comanche. Chinese Whisper sees the race by the throat on the downward leg, closing Fort Denison behind the Super Maxis, Wild Oats, Scallywag and Perpetual Loyal. But ahead of the 80-foot Bow Jest and the two Volvo 70s, Blackjack and Maserati. An extraordinary performance. And even though Bow Jest and Blackjack crept past her, as Chinese Whispers found the deepest of holes off the iconic old fort, the smallest boat in the fleet, was roaring, not whispering. The Solus Big Boat Challenge took the yachts on a 14 mile nautical course starting off Steel Point in Nilsen Park down the harbour to Manly, taking in most of Sydney's famous landmarks along the way, including Fort Denison, Mrs Macquarie's chair and the Sydney Opera House, which provides the picturesque finish line. David Witt again. About the rest of the race, were you happy with the way the boat performed? Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's a bit of a Mickey Mouse race, really, yeah, it isn't is, it? Yeah. You know, so you can't really take too much out of it. We can't put the boat in our upwind mode because we can't use water, the legs are too short. So we knew we were going to struggle a little bit there, but, um, you know, sometimes when the day's bad, you learn more. And our little, our big new A2, where we, you know, you would have seen us VMG down the thing, we came at Oats and went past Loyal. And mm. so, um, you know, Norwich to start would be nice. And, yeah. See how we go. Yeah, mate. Well, yeah, we'll be there watching. You are happy with the uh, build-up? Um, well, that's our first day. So we've got yeah. now, we've got 10 days from now, full crew training every day. Oh, good. So we chose this day as our first day to 
you know, be in a race mode and, and then work from there. So um, yeah, I think we'll be good. we've done a lot of sailing this year, so we've just got to get this uh, new sail sorted out. We have a problem with the furl and it's okay. Well, it's a beautiful day in Sydney, and look who we found. We found Dee Kafari. He's here doing the uh, voiceovers and the commentary for the Extreme Sailing Series. So, Dee, welcome to Sydney. Good to see you at last. Thank you. It's lovely to be here in fantastic conditions. Look, it's just brilliant, isn't it? You it's can't. Kind of Sydney Harbour at its best, I think. Well, it's you know, not England, this is not snowing, it's not <laughs> the middle of winter. This is Sydney Harbour, it's, as you say, at its best. It's wonderful. Yeah, no, welcome here. So, how long are you staying for? You make it's sadly just a week. I literally flew in this morning from Oman, where I've been sailing for a week with the Oman Sail Project out there. So, I had a little bit of winter sunshine in the Middle East, and then I thought I'd top it up with some Sydney sunshine. And I'm going to stay through until Wednesday, but I've sadly got to head back. So, no big boat sailing or Sydney Hobart for me this year. Oh, what a shame. Yeah, we can come out and have rib on the big boat on Tuesday and have a look at it. It'll be great. You're uh, you're having a lovely time uh, working the uh, the girls up, aren't you? As far as the Magenta project is concerned, do you want to explain it a little bit to us, please? Yeah, it was really important. I think at the end of the last fall variation race with Team SCA, like creating such a following and such a huge momentum, we didn't want to let that drop, and it wasn't apparent that we were going to go again. So um, we were like, right, how do we keep this momentum? And so we created the Magenta project as a legacy for Team SCA. So there's kind of four leaders of it but by default anyone from Team SCA is you know a, a person contributing and an ambassador for it and we've invited quite a few new people as well Olympians and yeah. different sailors into the mix you kind of believe what we're trying to do and this getting women recognized in sailing and getting us seen and heard is having an effect we've seen in 2016 alone We've seen the GC32 rules change to accept mixed crews and all female crews with an additional crew member. We've seen the Volvo Ocean Race uh, issue new rules for crew members and the makeup of each team. And we've seen five Figaro sailors as girls this year. So it really is kind of gaining momentum. It's just important that we keep that up. So, you know, hopefully we'll see more of us doing more things. Well, who are the uh, the leading lights? Who, who have you got your eye on as to the, the future? Well, I think it's really exciting because Sally Barco took a World Match Racing Tour card last year. She's yeah. just been issued another card for this year. So Magenta 32 will be back on the water in action. And we're definitely keen after our experience in Lisbon with the Extreme Sailing Series that we can get another mixed team or female team on the circuit for 2017. I'm definitely interested in this whole mixed Volvo now, I think that's the way forward. But it's the same case as always, it's securing the funding, which is difficult whether you're male or female, so it's just difficult to find funding anyway. But I think it is an exciting time to be female and in sport. Well, um, as I said before, I was just looking at some old uh, Vendée Globe footage and uh, saw your mast, uh, your uh, mainsail rather, and the way it was delaminating and having all the terrible troubles. You, uh, you interested in doing it again? Well, it's interesting doing a commentary for the departure and the start this year, and then you know there not being any girls in the race this year when everything else is really going forwards on the female side. There was nobody there for the Monday, and uh, I've been doing a lot of Imoka sailing this year back on the Imokas with Artemis in a program to bring young British solo sailors through, and I did some coaching with Rich Wilson, the American guy out on the water with his great American tour, and it was nice to be back on those boats. And I was like, oh, this is cool. And oh dear. seeing the racing and following the race is so exciting the Vendée this year. So much going on and the new boiling system, you know, it's, it's immense what the changes that's happened. But I've been out of the solo game for a while, so if I was to go back in that, it would need to be a proper campaign to give me time to get back up to speed. But I definitely wouldn't say no. Well, yeah. Uh, I'm not letting age affect me. I'm back in the gym so I can jump on a GC or jump on an iMocker or a Volvo, whatever comes up. Good girl. Well, we'll put the word out through the <laughs> through the world on water, which is the the world's most watched uh, sailing weekly sailing show, and we said we can't get something stimulated for you because Definitely we'd love not. to see you in it. I'd love to and it's really nice to come back down here. I'm going to meet up with lots of people while I'm here. So Caroline um, Brower has been out with the ACOL so she's racing in the harbour this weekend so I'm going to touch base with her. Um, Sophie Sizik is back on um, Itchy Barn so she's been racing. I'm going to catch up with her. Stacey Jackson's back on a live, the Volvo 70 so I'll catch up with her. 
Annemie Bess is back on ragamuffin. She did ragamuffin last year, so there's a lot of uh, good sailors around and about, and I'm hoping to touch base with them while I'm here. Well, it's good that the girls, that somebody of your stature, uh, is doing this because of the fact that, you know, we're just even talking to, uh, to the powers that be in sailing is that we're all worried about how we're losing our children between the ages of, you know, 10 and 11 and and 21, 22 sort of thing, yeah. Big yeah. dropout. Big dropout, yeah. That's a difficult age group to get through, but if you yeah. can keep the interest, keep it fun, and keep it a cool thing to do, which yeah. I think sailing now, you know, the NACA 17 is probably going to foil. The NACA 20s are being used to train the youth Americans, top guys before they get on their foiling boats. You know, the Phantoms are going to jump in on this fleet. Yeah, with Andy's organised, yeah. And I think that sailing now is, you know, kind of, there's some cool stuff going on, and that's what we need to keep that age group where it's very easy to get distracted by other things. Well, it's good to see that you've still got the, uh, the passion. Oh, definitely. And, uh, and you're out there doing things because it uh, you know, needs the, the people who are really involved in the sport to get out there and push it and, and create this yeah, sort of interest. I believe interest. you've got to give back as well. You know, yeah, it's indeed. no good just taking it all for yourself. You've got to encourage the others to follow on. We can't keep doing it forever. I like to think I can keep going. But, and, you know, just even being in the Middle East this last week, it's about, you know, kind of changing people's perceptions and making it okay and helping make it happen. And if uh, I can contribute to that, then I think it's great. Well, um, that's an interesting situation in the Middle East, isn't it, as far as Amanda is concerned. Uh, they've got all sorts of um, programs going, haven't they? So it's really growing and they're really trying to, you know, push it forwards and, uh, you know, the girls are part of that as well. So it's just making them step up and take ownership and, you know, kind of not you know, be a force to be reckoned with by working hard on it, not just because yeah. they're girls, but actually losing this girls or boys, it's actually all sailors, yeah. and just trying to make it more generic. You um, you had a team last year, didn't you? You were doing one of the major races there with the team? Yeah, so they're going to be going again, so we have Sailing Arabia the tour in February, yeah. and uh, there'll be an all-female boat out on that, on the par 30s, we've got eight races in the blue. And we do a tour of Arabia, a little bit like the old style Tour de France, where yes. we do some inshore racing and then we go offshore for the next leg and then some inshore racing. So it's quite full on and, uh, you know, some of these girls have never sailed in a spinnaker before and we're asking them to trim all night long. So it's, uh, it is a bit different. Yeah, we're going to be like 50% 50, 50 Amani and 50% expats to help them develop along the way. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, yeah, good to see you. Um, have a wonderful time here in Sydney. I'm sure you will do. Um, and, uh, and keep us involved in what you're doing. We'd uh, love Definitely. to know. I shall keep you posted on what I'm up to and thank you for delivering great deliveries. Look, it was just my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs>
and really the, the positions of the, the sailors and the crews uh, this afternoon will be fascinating to see how it plays out, especially boat on boat between Alinghi and Omania. Well, as you say, a lot riding on what happens on the water this afternoon. Let's remind ourselves of the current series standings coming into Sydney. Well, at the top of the list, Oman Air, to only two points behind is the Swiss team Alinghi, and then Red Bull sailing team taking up the last spot on the podium. But look at how close those points are at the top. With Sydney, the final act being double points, Oman Air and Alinghi are effectively tied, meaning whoever comes out on top here in the Australian waters will be crowned the champion. So in the end, after four days, the Swiss team Malingi was crowned 2016 Extreme Series champions in Sydney after an epic final day shootout and the season finale. It's the third time that Alinghi have won the Extreme Sailing Series following victories in 2008 and 2014. But it's the first time that they've done it flying on foils because it's the first year of the foiling for the Extreme Sailing Series. Sydney showed what a fantastic place to have the foiling on Sydney Harbour in the stadium racing and it's a shame it won't be here next year. Morgan Larson's Oman Air started the eighth and final act of the season with the upper hand taking the series point lead into the finals. While at the final act of the Extreme Sailing Series in Sydney, Australia, Land Rover BAR's academy team leader, Neil Hunter, celebrated by being announced that he's joining the major team to sail in the America's Cup next year. This is how he celebrates. The other wildcard team in Sydney is the Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron's young team and they do extremely well. They're right up in the points. Finally, Lingi started the day in charge with a 19-point buffer on Oman Air and opened the scorecard with a trademark form of two seconds on Sydney Harbour which delivered champagne sailing. It was a glorious day, beautiful in sunlight, with winds at 13 to 20 knots. However, a wobble halfway through the afternoon gave hope to Oman Air, and they answered by notching up a podium finish of their own to narrow the gap once more. Desperate to force Alinghi into making a mistake that could put them back onto the podium, and in consideration, Larson pulled every trick in the book, but it was not to be. The Swiss favourites, Alinghi, took out the title. Well, we're at uh, North Sales once again for the annual pre-Hobart checkup with Coco, Michael Coxon, who is the CEO. And uh, Michael's got all the goss and he's going to give us all, he's not going to tell us any fibs, <laughs> he's going to give us all the good news. Come on, Coco, what's been happening? I noticed that the place is just chock-a-block. Yeah, it's uh, been a very, very busy uh, lead up to this year's Hobart. Um, the, uh, the boys have been working uh, basically six days a week for 12 hour days for the last two months. So. It's um, keeping us on our toes. Uh, everyone's looking forward to the uh, Christmas break. When, when uh, Hobart start comes around, we all uh, sort of relax. No, it's actually a, a ro it, it's us relaxing going in the start of the race. Mate, I noticed behind you that's a very familiar sale. Is that uh, something to do with yeah. Wild Oats? Yeah, yeah that's uh, Wild Oats' uh, um, A5, which is its uh, fractional uh, downwind spinnaker. And uh, we're just reconfiguring it to their new uh, rig and prod um, setup. They basically, as you'd be aware, last year they made some major modifications to the boat. 
and uh, we just decided to update this spinnaker to be in line with the, mod the modification, so it's being made uh, uh, about 100 square metres bigger, about 150 square metres bigger than what it was previously, so it's a major open heart surgery, that one. What did they do to the boat to explain that to us, please? Um, well, I think most people would have seen the footage where they actually cut the bow off the boat uh, last year for last year's Hobart race and uh, effectively lengthened the bow. Um, more in the lines of what you'd see on uh, Comanche where the, uh, the uh, J or the, the uh, distance in front of the mast for the jib four triangle is a lot larger so you can get uh, larger headsails on. Um, and also that's moved the, uh, the um, mainsail further aft on the boat. So it's allowing them to get more sail area on. Uh, let's get, get a lot more um, downwind sail area also on the boat. Uh, and I was out sailing uh, with Oates on uh, Monday and uh, went through all the paces of uh, all the rigs and so on and seeing the rig up and I was really impressed at not only their level of crew skills for t first time out uh, since uh, Hamilton Island, but how the boat was actually performing. I had a little bit to do with them in Hamilton Island. They just uh, basically it was the first shakeout since the very rushed lead up to the Hobart. Um, boat was not performing to, to what we all would all expect in Hamilton Island and uh, the, one of the reasons is that um, there was also a rig modification made where it went from runners and check stays to deflectors and that's a, um, normally done on swept-back spreader rigs and this is an inline spreader rig so it's a, it was a little bit of fine tuning needed to be done but Southern Spars have been uh, working with uh, uh, both Ian Murray and ourselves and our designers to get the pre-bend correct in the rig and the rig set up right and we've got a new luff curve on the mainsail which suits the new mast setup. So uh, it's all looking very nice now. So the new girl really is, uh, or the old girl rather, is really new isn't she? Yeah, it's amazing uh, over the years. Um, obviously uh, it started off with the two Maxis, the Alfa Romeo and, and Wild Oats back in 2005 where we went head to head then. and. Um, uh, we had a great rivalry and uh, since Alpha then has been sold to Europe and not really on the maxi circuit anymore, uh, Oates has done a great job in keeping uh, the boat up to date. You know, it's a 10 or 11 year old boat now and they keep doing really good modifications and uh, just keeping it on the pace the whole time. So what about your, uh, your uh, after the solace yesterday, I was very impressed with the way that the boys on Loyal went. Yeah, yeah, that's great. It, 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 um, uh, I've been on Loyal for the last six years and uh, with Anthony and um, <coughs> he decided not to do the Hobart this year and uh, so uh, I yeah, look for other opportunities and I'm now on Maserati, the uh, Volvo 70, um, which was the old Ericsson and with uh, Jim Cooney and his family and uh, so uh, Anthony's decided to go full pro this time around so he's only having one celebrity on the boat, that uh, Aaron Molan. Uh, who went last year, and uh, the rest are full pro crew. And, uh, I All the Comanche some, crew, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of the Comanche crew. And uh, Albie Pratt from uh, from our loft here. Oh, Albie's going Yeah, Albie's on board, yeah. We've got some new sails on and Albie's on board. And uh, yeah, Anthony, at the last minute, he you know, gave me a call uh, about two months ago and said, I've decided I want to do it again. I said, well, I'm committed. But uh, he's really done a good job. He's in, in, uh, imported the Comanche crew, uh, uh, headed by um, Tony Mutter, who's very, very experienced. He's to IC, to Kenny Reid on Comanche, and uh, they looked very slick yesterday. They did, didn't they? Yeah. Yes, they looked good. Well, yeah, what about the boat? Do you think the boat down uh, it's retired because of the hull problems the yeah. last two races? So yeah, it's... Um, is that it's all fixed? In, it's interesting. Well, the answer is, I don't know the answer, but I'm sure that um, uh, Black Joe is in charge of the boat. He, he yeah, does not want to have a third failure.